We're here with Rosie and Rachel, and we're going to talk all about getting your pet business found on Google and all about marketing too. So it's going to be a really valuable chat. Um, this talk we're going to have today, and I'm going to leave it to Rosie and Rachel, and they're going to um, chat through everything, go through all the stats, and give you loads and loads of value and help with your pet business. So welcome, Rosie. Welcome, Rachel. Maybe you want to say hello and introduce yourselves. Thanks sure. so much for having us, Bill. Rosie, do you want to go first? Oh, okay, cool. Um, hello, everyone. I'm Rosie Robinson from Woof Design, and I make uh, websites for pet businesses. And I'm a local SEO expert and uh, Google My Business as well. And hi, everybody. And thanks, Bill, for having us in the group as well. Really great to be here. I'm Rachel Spencer, and I am a writer. I write about the pet industry um, for national newspapers and magazines here in the UK. I also have a pet business podcast where I share how you can get publicity for your pet business. And I have a pet blog as well, um, where I write about all things pet. Um, and that's kind of where my journey started, really. So um, my focus is on helping pet businesses with content creation and getting publicity. So a bit of a, a, bit of a rambling intro, but the main thing is it's about getting your business out there and seen by more pet parents. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. Awesome stuff. I'm going to be here. I'm going to monitor the comments. So if you've got questions about what Rosie and Rachel are talking about, please pop them in the comments and I'll um, keep an eye on them. And then we'll ask them at the end of the chat and um, get your questions answered for you. So over to you two. Fabulous. OK, so um, Rosie, do you want to kind of... Gosh, I've gone all nervous now. <laughs> so yeah, so... <laughs> So what we're going to be talking about today is about how to get your pet business found on Google and we're going to Rosie's going to be covering like the website and SEO side of things and we're both I'm going to be covering a little bit about content and we're both going to be covering um, you know just general things that pet business owners need to know particularly for you as grooming businesses as local service providers which are going to be really helpful um, when it comes to getting your website found because that's really important we've got loads of new pet owners um, who have, you know, bought dogs during lockdown. Some of you might, um, you know, I know there's a few cat groomers um, who I deal with as well. So it might be a cat, it might be cats that you groom, but there's lots and lots of new pet parents out there um, who will need to know about your products and services. So I'm going to, actually, I'm going to start with a couple of um, quite, quite like jaw-dropping stats um, that we've got together. So the first thing is, obviously, we've known about the puppy boom and, you know, we've got a situation where people are paying so much more money for puppies, you know, two, three, four times the price that they would do before lockdown. Um, and obviously, these puppy owners are going to need products and services like your grooming products or your grooming service. Um, a couple of stats here for you, which will literally, you know, it's just astonishing. Um, there was a study by Le Chamou, which is a posh welly brand, and they found that £3.7 billion pounds was spent last year on dogs alone. And that was on toys, treats and accessories. So that's just on, you know, those those small things. Those pet owners are also going to need grooming as well. Um, there were 3.2 million pets bought in lockdown, um, and that's figures from the Pet Food Manufacturers Association. Um, the dog population rose from 9.5 million to 12 and a half million between 2019 and right now. And the cat population rose from 7.5 million to 12.2 million, which is just like, oh my gosh, this is astonishing. So now it used to be one in four homes had a dog. Now it's one in three homes. And all of those stats are available from Pet Food Manufacturers Association. So if you did want to go and check them out, you can do. Um, but yeah, it's pretty astonishing, really. Um, so now I'm going to hand over to Rosie, who is also a pet service provider. She has a dog boarding business and she's going to talk a little bit more about what that means, I guess, for, for yeah, you guys. Absolutely. It's interesting, isn't it? Because um, so Rachel and I have lots of chats about lots of things and it always sort of comes back to business and how things are going and where the latest trends are and everything like that. So when she told me these stats the other day, we were absolutely, we were, we were gobsmacked, weren't we? Because we kind of knew that this was how things were going and the trends and everything like that. But when you actually take a moment to sit and think about those huge figures, um, these pet parents, what Rachel and I were talking about is these pet parents, they're, um, they're primed and they're ready to spend their money on your services. And it's interesting talking to you guys as well, a group of groomers, because 
your services are essential to dogs. When we're talking about um, pet products and collars and bow ties and things like that, they're kind of the non-essentials. And yet people are still wanting to spend loads and loads of money on them. So actually, when we're looking at grooming services, which to, I would say the majority of dogs are kind of essential, aren't they? Then there's this whole huge audience of people out there that want your services. They want your business. They're looking, they're ready to spend their money. And I think as well, um, it used to be that this wasn't the sort of done thing to go and spend loads of, you got a puppy, but you know, you didn't spend four grand on it. You didn't go and um, have multiple dog collars and uh, multiple outfits for the dogs and, you know, a bowl for every day of the week, all those sorts of things that we as uh, dog owners now do. But these, these, this new audience, um, and especially the sort of millennial audience that we've got, they're, they're wanting to do this. These pets are very much part of the family now. I know that um, towards the end of our dog walking business in London, we were got, getting a lot of pre-inquiries. So people would ring up and say, not I've got a dog and I'm looking for a dog walker or daycare, but actually I'm looking at getting a puppy and I want to know how much the daycare is. So, because we're out at work all day. So I think the stigma has gone that was maybe attached to spending a lot of money on pet products and services. And people now know that these services exist, like the, the walking and the grooming, and they figure this into the budget before they get it. So they're very aware that, you know, of, of the cost and they don't mind spending the money, which I think is really, really interesting. Um, so, from my point of view as a website designer, obviously I see a lot of people writing in groups about, oh, I'm just starting out and, um, or my business isn't so busy, what can I do to get um, clients and customers and things? And from my point of view, obviously a website with really banging SEO and then you'll Google my business on the end of it is gonna be the sort of foundation to your business to do then do all the, the other things that you have to do to market your business. Now, I will never be a, a naysayer of social media or TikTok or whatever you wanna do for marketing. I think it's important to work out what you want to do for your business. And it's also about working out where your clients are. So it might be that you wanna go for the premium market or you might wanna go for you know, a specific area market. It's all about thinking about your own business, working out where those clients and customers are. Are they hanging out on TikTok if you're going for the younger crew? Are they hanging out on Facebook if you're maybe going for the slightly older market? It's all about working out where they are and going and grabbing them. But really thinking about the website and the SEO as your core uh, base, like the foundation of your house, because then when you go and do all of these things, because let's face it, these things that we do around to market our business, like our content marketing, our digital marketing, social media, they all take time, a lot of time and you know, a lot of effort as well. So when we do those things, but we haven't got the foundation sorted, the website and the SEO, then it makes those things even harder to do. Whereas when you've got that foundation sorted, it makes all of this work really, really well. And it's like, that when my clients get this sort of foundation right, that's when I see them really, really grow and really expand and really grow their businesses. I just had an email from a client this morning and she uh, she ran a garage before, a car mechanics garage, and she, uh, she wanted out of this. She'd been doing it for many, many years and she wanted to go into dog walking. So we set her up with a website and bless her, she, she couldn't think of a name. She, she, she was out of her comfort zone, but she was a dog lover. She did loads of training. She actually went and did dog walking courses and anything that she could get her hands on to prepare. So we had some time to prepare her for this. Got her website up and running. I got this amazing email her from her this morning saying how well it's going. She gave me her income for last week. I won't share it with you because that's not fair. But it's like, oh my God, if you translate that into a monthly income, she and she was saying to me thank you so much you couldn't even think of a business name you've done me a logo you've made me a website you've obviously done something to it because all of her inquiries are coming through that and she, she I think she was worried about you know how the income would compare from the previous job that she did 
And she completely exceeded that. I mean, completely through the roof. So the point of this was not only to be like, yay, happy, happy. But now she's like, right, what am I going to do from here? So she's doing um, courses with the dog training college. Can I put this? Can I do this? So I think once you get this foundation and this client base of clients and everything, and for grooming, it's very much about where do I want to take this? Do I want to sell products? Do I want to get people into work for me? How do I want to expand? Do I want to have another location? You know, it's really, really exciting. Yeah, it's an, it's an exciting time for, for groomers and for all the pet professionals, isn't, isn't it? Because yeah, you, you've I got, so. you know, you've just got this huge, um, this huge pool of people who need what you offer. Um, and I think if you're a groomer who that can really stand out and really share your your ethos and your values and what you do, then yeah. that's really going to make it nice and easy for people to choose you, isn't it? Um, I know we can't see the live comments, but Bill is your Bill's keeping an eye on them for us. But I would love to know if you would be able to let us know in the chat where your clients, um, if you track where your clients find you, um, and yeah, and like what the what the breakdown of that is. So if if people would be able to let us know in the chat, that would be really helpful. Um, obviously in this session we're talking about getting found on Google um, and I always look at I always look at it because I'm not a pet professional I'm a dog owner um, and as I say my background is media and, and content creation um, but as a dog owner I kind of I look at it like this I think okay so I live in Newcastle up in the northeast I've got a little terrier sorry but it doesn't go to the groomers and now I'm thinking oh my god I'm in a group full of groomers maybe I need hopefully they're going to tell me what I need to do with my terrier that's got a short coat but anyway that's by the by so I think if I wanted to go and get a dog dog let's say if I wanted to find a dog groomer in Newcastle or a dog walker in Newcastle this would be these would be the steps that I would follow um, so I would go on to probably go onto Facebook I've not lived here very long so I don't have many I don't really know loads of people here so I'd probably go to Facebook um, and I would probably say, you know, I'm looking for a, a dog walker or a groomer for Patch. He's this, that and the other. He's five. He's a terrier. You know, he doesn't have like, he doesn't need, you know, properly clipping or anything like that. But maybe, you know, whatever it is that he needs. And people usually say, oh, you want to try shampoo cheese or you want to try, you know, you know, Newcastle pooch parlor or you want to try these different places. And then what I would do as a dog owner, not a pet professional, is I'd look down the list and I think, OK, oh, well, I know so and so. I trust what she says she said this i think okay this name has come up a lot and this name you know the i've heard some good things about this grooming parlor and then i'd go okay i'm going to go to google now and i'm going to have a look at them all and i'd go to google i put the names in i'd then look at the websites and see okay what what's going to jump out at me because i don't like please don't make this i hope this doesn't sound frivolous but all I want to know is that Patch is going to have a nice time when he goes to the groomers. He doesn't like going on the table. He freaks out at the table. So I'd want that would be one thing that I would want to see on the website. What happens if your dog is nervous at the groomers? If there was content around that, that would make me choose that particular groomer. I'd also want to see maybe what the process is when you book in for a groom or, you know, what happens when you have a groom is what products they use. All of these different things, they would be things that would shape my decision. I have to say it wouldn't be on price. Not that I'm like, I'm not, you know, I wouldn't be able to spend like £300 on a groom, but it would, you know, I would, if somebody was saying he won't be on the table, he will have X, Y, Z, the products that we use are okay with for dogs with allergies, skin friendly, all of those different things, they would help shape my decision. So as a consumer um, and like as pet professionals, we want to be thinking about what our what our customers are thinking, not about what other dog groomers or pet professionals are thinking. We want to be making the impression on the on the customer. They're the kind of things that I would want to see. So I would love for you guys to just bear that in mind. I'm sure you do already. But what I see quite a lot with pet professionals is they worry about putting stuff on the website about what they do because they think other pet professionals will either criticise or copy. But actually, the website isn't for other pet professionals. It's for people like me who need to know what you do. Um, that's why I'm always banging on about content like Rosie comes in she helps me inside of my, my coaching program we're doing this course together and we're always like firing off like tons of ideas aren't we between us because Rosie's really good at this as well but I come from it from the from the consumer point of view and when we're thinking about our content that's what you know I'd love for you guys to be doing too so on your websites have those things that are going to make people like me think yes this person gets me they're going to be a patch is going to be okay there and we have to remember as well, don't we, that um, 
these the the these are not just people's pets they're people's babies they're members of their family so actually i think you you've hit the nail on the head they're not really interested in price either and to be honest if somebody is just shopping around about on a price then they're not they don't really turn into long term clients anyway do they i think people People aren't so worried about price. They're worried about where their dog is going, about what's going to happen to them, about the procedure and about the process and everything like that. And we can use our content marketing and our websites and our social media posts, everything that we're doing to alleviate that fear of the unknown. Because if you think about it, it's all about fear of the unknown, really, isn't it? What's it? They've got this tiny little, you know, six month old puppy who they're aware is really hairy and really fluffy and they kind of want it, they know it needs a haircut, but they don't want all the haircut straight away because it's not going to look like their puppy and they don't want it to look like an adult puppy. So it's about reassuring them that it's okay, we can do a, we, we're just going to get them used to the groomers and they're not going to be scared and we're going to give them lots of treats and we don't have to do a full groom straight away. You're it's still going to look, God, I remember this with all my dog walking clients. They don't look like a puppy anymore. They look like a different dog. So it's about reassuring them along this journey that it's still, you know, we can do a sort of medium, trim their paws and cut the, you know, little schnauzer eyebrows and everything so that they can see again. So while we're doing this, we're like, we're connecting as well, aren't we, with these people and reassuring them that everything's going to be okay. And we really are the best, uh, the best service in, in your area. And we're what you're looking for. And if you're doing that on your content marketing, your website and everything, then of course you're going to be, you know, if you're comparing, like you said, Rachel, um, as the consumer A and B, then it, you just want to make it a no brainer to choose you as the person with all this helpful information and everything, right? If I can jump in there, um, you know, a lot of um, experience I've had around talking to pet groomers is it, they don't they don't understand maybe that they are business people and sales people they are actually sales people for their for their business and um they go out there but they hide so much behind their logos and they're behind they hide behind their their pictures and their facebook whereas like you explained they want you want them to build that know like and trust isn't it that's what we we're aiming towards is by putting that content out there you're building that know like and trust and when people have got that, then they'll start buying from you as well, won't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. And it's a case of doing it everywhere as well. And with the no like, and trust, um, reviews are so important. We have people ringing us up for, for our, our daycare and boarding at the moment. And the, right, what Rachel was talking about customer journey wise was really super interesting because I think that customer journey, thinking about that, thinking that the path people are going to take is really important. And I think we've had um, quite a few inquiries recently where they've rung up and they've said to Kelly, I've seen your reviews on Google. I'm really impressed with your reviews. And so these, you know, it's, it's really important that we're getting those customer reviews. They're on our Google My Business. Google My Business is ramping up efforts at the moment and really making businesses who are using Google My Business much more visible. And we're actually seeing inquiries where people have, have maybe skipped one point of it as well. Maybe they've skipped the, the website or they skipped the, Google, the, um, the, the Facebook and they're using these reviews. So it's really, it's really difficult to know people's journey. So that's why it's, although I say choose your platforms, it's important to be doing all of the parts so that you're you've you've got that sort of journey that people are going to take and you're you're getting them at every part of the journey you know mm -hmm. yeah i mean like similar to you bill you've got a podcast you've got this facebook group you'll mm -hmm. have a facebook page you'll have an instagram um so people can reach you at all those different places um, and i think from a groomer's perspective like when you were talking about people hiding and not wanting to be seen as in physically seen like oh my gosh, I know I'm a journalist. So, you know, I'm so nosy anyway, and I want to see people. And, you know, that's how I've been trained. And whenever we're writing stories about people, we have to see a picture, but people are naturally curious. That's why these magazines, the human interest magazines sell so well. It's why we love this morning. And, you know, we're just fascinated by people, aren't we? And we're like that as consumers, we want to know the the people behind the businesses and what they're all about. Just written a few notes when Rosie was talking. So Rosie was talking about um, reviews being really important. And reviews on Google and Facebook, yep, they're really important. But actually, you can create 
you can create um, longer, longer form reviews on your website as well by sharing case studies and sharing mm -hmm. clients who you might have worked with. So I did this story a few years ago. I've done a couple of groomer stories actually for local papers. Um, and it was about this couple from Warrington and they had a groom, dog grooming business and they were contacted by the local shout. No, they were contacted by an owner, right? And basically, I can give you the link to it, Bill, if you want it later. Basically, this owner was going, this dog was going to be put to sleep because he wouldn't go to the groomers. He had a really shaggy coat and he was in quite a mess. It was quite matted. Anyway, um, this couple said, oh God, we can't have that happen. We, you know, we'll take him and we'll slowly get him used to being groomed and get him, get him healthy again. I mean, I can't believe that this dog was going to be put to sleep, but that's what happened. Now that, that ended up going in the local paper and it was an amazing, amazing piece of publicity for them because they'd saved a dog and also they were brilliant dog groomers. So, I mean, it was just a perfect story. <laughs> so if you've got a case study, if you've got a client who you've worked with, who's happy to share and happy to give an extended testimonial about how they might have rescued a dog and the dog really hated grooming, the dog could have they could have had any kind of background, it doesn't have to be really sensational. Um, but if you can get them to talk, you talk, you know, talk you through the process of how you help that animal, how and then how they've got from, you know, from A to B and how they're now, you know, they're now healthier, they, they like the groomers, you've got them over their anxiety. That's really going to that's really going to be compelling content that's going to make people choose you. The other thing that you can do as well, another I know we're talking about websites, but I'm just going to bring in a couple of bits of publicity because I think it's quite helpful for you to um, for, for me to bring this in. Um, I did another story about a lady who was launching, a, opening a grooming salon also in Warrington, um, which I didn't do the story, actually, but I share it as a really good example because she was opening a grooming salon. And one of the things that she had been doing, one of her values was to support the local rescue shelter. So she would go in and she'd give free grooms to the new dogs who'd come in from the, you know, the council wardens or wherever they'd come from. She'd give them grooms to make them, you know, to make them like feel better to, you know, some of them would come in and in, in, you know, they would be in a very good way. And um, she had this wonderful article written about her in the Warrington Guardian, huge local paper, goes online as well. So it's really good publicity for her grooming salon. Um, but, you know, that was her sharing her values and her what she's all about. And again, if I'm thinking, I, I did, I actually took my old dog Daisy to get groomed there because I read this story. And I, I mean, I am every salesperson's dream anyway. But if you think about that, if you're scared of selling, and I'm going to be honest and say I'm scared of selling as well. So that's why I use content marketing. That's why I've got a podcast and I do, you know, I've got a blog and all the things that I do. If you're scared of selling, but you've got an amazing story like that, you're not going to be scared of sharing that story, are you? you you're not going to be scared about saying, OK, maybe doing a Facebook Live, you're down at the animal shelter or taking a photo of a before and after of a dog that you've groomed. That's not selling, but that's making people choose you. And that's what exactly what I did. That's why I talk about it from a consumer point of view rather than a pet professional, because that's exactly what I did. And. You're, I know there'll be people watching this live or watching it on the catch up or listening on the podcast and you'll think actually yeah do you know what I've got something like that and I could use that and that is going to be just going to be content gold for you and please don't think you're being cynical doing that either you're not it's not like you're going out oh. selling you know hand sanitizer you know a year ago for like 50 quid a bottle you're not you're just telling people what you do and that's absolutely okay and and it's you know what you're all about so years, years ago so going um, up on one yeah, no, no, you, that I was going to say, I've got a, a prime example for you. Um, this was like 15 years ago, I suppose. Our local um, newspaper ran a makeover competition and you had to write, you had to write in to uh, win this makeover competition. And I wrote in on em Emma's behalf, so she'd been dog grooming. And um, I was like, you know, she comes home covered in hair, stinking of dogs and cats. You know, this makeover would be really great. And so she got selected to have this makeover but what it did was it she was able to do like a story about it so although it wasn't like a direct come and see a to z animal care and we'll look after your pets it was a story about emma and her business so you don't your advertising doesn't always have to be like come and see us come and see us come and see us does it it can be wow. you know, this is what we've done or this is what my client's done yeah yeah and i think as well you're and, and this ties in with what you're both saying it's like content marketing and selling doesn't have to be that sort of cheesy this is what we do and we're amazing la 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 it's about finding those stories and things that you do and for me and I think this is something that we've spoken about before Rachel and we have to remember to do with our own clients as well 
is that um, our clients don't don't know the 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 things that we think are common sense. What we think to us are common sense and boring and not interesting. That is ideal content, right? Because your clients don't know it. So whereas you think, oh, that they'll know that. No, they don't know that. They really don't know that, and they want to know it. So actually, you know, you don't have to sort of sit there thinking, oh my god, I've got to think of something really impressive for my my marketing and my blog post and my whatever I'm doing. It doesn't have to be. It can just be the simplest things about your business that are actually probably the really important things that people need to know. For example, sort of the, you know, the shampoos that you use or the courses that you've gone on or, you know, have you, tra- a lot of people at the moment are looking at the sort of, um, uh, what are they called? When you do the holistic oils, you know, the essential or calming oils, you know, if you use those in your grooming salons and things like that, people love knowing just little details about your business. It doesn't have to be a great big, huge thing, but it's just sort of um, opening up a little bit and sharing a little bit more about you and your business. Because when you do this and people come on your website or they look at your social media, it's so much more engaging and it's it's much more content on your website to then appear in Google as well, which we'll talk about with regards to blog posts and things. Um, so I think I think it's really important to, to not skip over the, the, the basis things. And if you're new to this and starting out, then just start out with the smaller things and build up. And I think once you get into the routine of it as well, you're like, oh my God, yeah, absolutely. And you'll find that people mention it when they ring up. I saw that on your website. I saw this on your website. I read about that. It really, it can, it can seem a bit icky, but it's not. It's just about sharing you and your business and what you do because yeah. people are interested. They want to know, you know, you, it's right. not, it's not Sainsbury's, is it? You know what Sainsbury's yeah. does, you know? I think I told you this one, Rosie, but I've helped a lady uh, who grows cottage flowers. And so we did a lot of marketing around the flowers that she's growing during the summer and spring. And then it got into the winter period and it's seasonal flowers. So um, what do we do now? And I was like, we well, need to go out there and take a video and photos of you turning over the soil, preparing the beds, planting the seeds. And, and Lynn, she's actually in the group. She's like, but why? why? Why do I need to like take a video of me planting some seeds? I'm like, it's because they're going to be buying those plants. They're going to be buying those flowers from you like in the spring. They want to see that journey. They want to see that yeah. journey of business. And they want to get to know about you and your business and how you create these wonderful flowers and bouquets for their, that they're going to buy. And you're adding value to your services. Yeah. And it's different with um, dog groomers. You know, you could... You could advertise like you're looking for a new pair of scissors and the, the decision making you've done to go around to, to do that and what it's going to bring to the customer and stuff like that. So, yeah, yeah. yeah tell that story. That's brilliant. Yeah, that's to feel part that's, of the process, don't they? Sorry. Go on, Rosie. Yeah, I was just going to. Yeah, absolutely. And I was just going to say as well, and this is why blogging is so great, because you can you've got a chance to sell, to tell these stories and these things about your business that you know when you tell them on Facebook or social media once chances are they're going to disappear and you're not going to be able to find them again but if you're writing this content as blog posts on your um on your website not only have you got a chance of then ranking it in Google and more people finding you because of that like with the flowers people will be looking up you know how to sow seeds and things like that but it's there forever so you've got this constant story of the business and how it unfolds and what happens on a yearly basis I mean that's just lovely to read as a keen gardener myself but a very I'm learning a lot you know I googled the other day about how to take a cutting so a lot of gardeners that would be like oh I just do that as a I don't know how to do it where do I cut it do I cut it up there do I cut it under there do you know what I mean so even those basic things that to a gardener or that's just a basic thing to to even tell those small things and then as part of the story I just think is lovely it's a really lovely way to get not only to get your website ranking in Google to get more visibility on it but also to create that um connection with people is just it's lovely it's a really lovely thing to do yeah I was just thinking about Anna Pollard who I think is in your group from the doghouse Leicester and she's like she is really 
I love her stuff. So I live in Newcastle, so I'm never going to be able to take my dog to the dog house. But if I could, I would. If I'm ever passing, I'll be going there because she's just so brilliant. I get her emails and I follow her on social media. And when we were in lockdown the first time, I was like this time last year, she was so brilliant. And um, she did because we weren't allowed to go out. And well, you all know that anyway, don't you? But she was talking about how to brush your dog and how to, you know, what to do. She, I think she did she did do something about claw clipping and um you know how to wash your dog at home and all of this really helpful information um, and that's still on her Facebook it's still on her website it's still there for people to find if they need to because particularly if like somebody um you know if someone can't get to the groomers or if you're a groomer and you're in a really brilliant position of being um you know being fully booked or people are having to wait for quite a long time for an appointment if you can give them something that's going to help them in the interim let's say Let's say I've got a cockapoo, I've adopted, you know, adopted a rescue cockapoo, the coat's in a terrible state, I can't get to you, but is there something you can give me to help me in between me getting to you? If you can do that, if you can send, if I send you an email and say, oh, you know, I've got, I've rescued this cockapoo, is the coat's in a bad way, um, have you got an appointment? You say, okay, I can't fit you in until two weeks time, but I've got this and this will help you. Because you, I wouldn't know what to do with a cockapoo who was, who was matted, but you guys would. If you can give them something, if you can give me something that's going to make me feel like I'm doing right by my dog and I'm that's going to make me feel like my dog's in the, in the right hands and then I'm going to be really, I'm going to be loyal to you. So, you know, I've got that cockapoo blog that's really helped me. I bring my new cockapoo in, you make him look all lovely um, and then we keep that relationship going. So you'll probably show, you would, I would love for you to show a picture of my before and after cockapoo on social media and then to you to tag me and for me to go, oh, look at him after he's had his groom, doesn't he look brilliant? People love all this stuff. Um, and then you keep that relationship going. And for me, I would be loyal to you because you would be that person who got me out of a hole when I got my new dog and I didn't know what to do. And then you got him in as quick, quickly as you could. You were lovely to him. So it's all like this journey. I know it sounds cheesy because we are, we need to have you no know, like and trust and we need these customer journeys. And it's like, that's why we try and make it like really real. I know I'm waffling on the load here, but like real stuff happening. And you'll all have like stories like that about getting them out there um, and storytelling on social media, on your website, everywhere you go. Um, and not holding back from putting yourself out there. I have this, like, I say this and I feel like, oh, I, I, sometimes I feel silly saying this, but I've been a journalist for like 20 years and I, about five years ago, I decided I wanted to work more with smaller businesses. And I had a guy who did my website at the time and he told me about, I didn't really know about a website. He told me about SEO and he said, Rachel, you've got to be blogging. You've got to be talking about how you can help small businesses with their copywriting at the time or with press releases. And I just went, oh, my God, I can't do it because other journalists will look at me and think, who, do, who does Rachel think she is? Why? You know, she's not an expert on this. How can she be writing about copywriting? Why? Who does she think she is waffling on about how about all she does? And I didn't do it for years, like in only like three years ago that I started to do it. So I have been there like I, you know, I shied away from this for a long time as well. But if you're not out there, you're not telling people how you can help them. You know, how do people know how you can help them? That's the thing. Um, so so yeah it's I think it's it is scary um and when you first start doing it you you know when I first started blogging I had a friend who also had a blog at the same time we would literally ring each other and say right I'm going to hit publish on mine you hit publish on yours and we do it together like literally holding hands on the phone because it is a bit scary but it will work for you I know it will work for you because you know I wouldn't I wouldn't come and say these things um, you know it's not like we're trying to sell snake oil we know it works don't we Rosie yeah a hundred percent I think the other thing that I've just thought about with regards to blog posts as well is which is what we were talking about the other day and I, I yeah walking the walk so I did uh, my SEO mini series because I'm seeing so many questions about SEO and what it is and how it works and everything like that so i I think I posted it in the group, didn't I, Bill? Uh, I did a six days SEO mini series and I've made it its own separate category on my own blog as well so that everything's all in one and I can easily then take that link. And if there's any questions about SEO in general, I can give them the link um, to people uh, of the mini series itself. Or if it's like specifically about keywords or something, then I can give them the link to the blog post that is just about keywords. Um, and this has been absolutely brilliant because, and this it works the same for groomers, trainers, walkers as well. So if you're in Facebook groups, if people are asking questions, 
if you're in local groups, quite often there's a ban on promoting your own business. Um, and you were saying this the other day, Rachel, do you remember that when you're in a Facebook group and there's a ban on promoting your own business, but if somebody's asking a question, then generally it's okay that you can say, oh, I've got a really helpful article on that. Here's the link to it. So you're kind of, we're not trying to get around rules of Facebook groups or anything, but because we're being helpful and posting content. So if you've got like dogs of my local area and somebody's asking about, you know, how does, how, how do I deal with my curly coat as Anna wrote her, you know, her post on and everything, you can then go and post that. Now, then, then those people are then on your website, right? They're not on anybody else's website that just typed out an answer in the Facebook group. They're on your website looking around. And because you've been helpful and written this content, and then at the bottom of the blog post, there's like three other posts that they also want to read about things that you've done or, you know, things that the salon believes in or uses or, you know, anything about the business, you're keeping them on your website. How likely are they to book with you rather than the person that didn't help? Mega likely, right? Yeah. I've got, um, you know, this is really helpful and people are going to be watching this later and listening to it on the podcast and stuff. And I've got a feeling they might start screaming at the screen and at their, their phone going, but when do we do all this? <laughs> you know, a, a lot of um, pet groomers, uh, as we know from like meeting everyone in this in this uh, Facebook group, they are the, the manager, the groomer, the accountant, the HR, the advertiser. So have you got any tips or help about people that are time poor? We, you know, we are time poor. So loads. You We've know, got loads of yeah. tips. Don't worry. These blogs and doing this marketing might hit that sort of overwhelm alarm where mm -hmm. they're like, I know I need to do it, but how? How do I do this? So my first mega tip, and then I'll hand over to Rachel because Rachel does this as a job. So hers is a bit different, but I don't do it as a job. Mine is very much like a groomer. It's something that I do as part of my marketing on the side. And I actually, Rachel taught me this ages ago. So you take the content that you're writing already and you use that as a basis for your, your blog post. And I do this a lot. And it's usually to answer a question. So I always say, if I get asked a question once, I'll answer it. If I get asked a question twice, I might think about it and note it in my brain. Third time, I go and write a blog post about it. But what I do is, and generally we find that people can write a really long Facebook post. We see them all the time, right? They've got time to sit there and write a Facebook post. Once it gets to about this long, put it on the blog post. Don't worry about making it look too pretty. It just needs to be the text with like one main image, you know? That is your blog post. You can go back to it later and, and maybe write a bit more or update it or add some nice pictures in or you took some really great pictures in the salon that day and you thought, oh yeah, they'd be really great for that blog post. I'm going to go and pop them on there. But really, for me, that's how I started. And because I was like, I can't write blog posts, I don't have any time. But I, but I knew I needed to do it because I knew it was going to be great for my business. So that's how I started. And like with everything, once you get into the habit of doing it, it becomes a lot more doable. And I'm not, I don't think either Rachel or I are suggesting that people blog every single day. And really, if you can't manage once a week, that's absolutely fine. If you can manage like bi-weekly or just once a month, then that's absolutely brilliant because it kind of becomes quite enjoyable once you start doing it. And the other thing is we can get some really great Google juice by doing special things between Google My Business and blog posts as well. It's like, oh my God, it's absolutely genius. We've been using that this week with one of our new um, Google My Business clients. So um, yeah, I would say don't panic. There's ways around this and I will hand over to Rachel. Yeah, I'm going to just reiterate what Rosie said. So I do, um, yeah, definitely. If you're writing a Facebook post that's longer than 200 words, you can definitely double that and add a few subheadings in and turn it into a blog post and get it up on your website. Um, and I see a lot of people who say, I don't have time to blog, but then I look at the Facebook pages and they're writing reams and reams of really good content. And it's like I, one of the ladies who, who's a client had done something and I was like, Oh, they were sending emails, like really long emails, really detailed emails that are like 500 words or longer. Like, why? That's a blog post. You just repurpose it. So it is about repurposing and thinking of the common questions, because also if we think about it like this way, if we think about the common questions, which could be how do you know, how do I, how do I brush my dog in between grooms? That could be a common question. 
you could, if you've got a blog post on that, rather than you sending a reply every time you get that email, you go, oh, yep, yeah, well, don't worry, we've got a really handy guide here. Here's the link, send it off. So actually you're saving time by having that core content that's answering the most common questions that you get. And um, there are all kinds of tips and tricks that I can tell you about. I've got a podcast on it and it's, you can either read it or just um, listen or read as a blog post. But there's all kinds of like apps and stuff like, so if you're not, a, if you don't, if the thought of sitting down and typing makes you want to cry, there's an app called Otter and you can, there's a free version and you basically just dictate into your phone and say, you know, 10 ways to keep your dog cool this summer or whatever it's going to be. And you'd say, you know, make sure that make sure that they don't go for walks in the hot weather. Um, you know, keep, you know, keep her cool mat in the garden, whatever it is that you're going to say in your post. And then you just expand on it. You could speak into the Otter app. It would transcribe it for you. It's AI, so it doesn't, there are some things in there that won't make any sense. You will have to go and edit it, but you can then basically cut and paste it from the app and then type it in your in whatever program you use, whether it's Word or, or however you use it, and then smart tag it up a little bit and put it on your website. So there are like loads of little tips and tricks that you can use. Also, like what I would say is don't feel that you're, if you're gonna start doing a blog, don't feel like it's gonna look like the BBC website. It doesn't have to look really fancy. You can build and learn new things. So like, you know, one thing I can't do is infographics. I'm not, my graphic skills are really bad. I can use Canva, but I know I see groomers using it a damn sight better than I do. So at first you might just want to have your, you know, you might just want to have a picture of the shop or you might want to have one of your, you know, one of your nice stock images of you that you've got, or, you know, just, you, or you could just make a, just make a headline or a, or a, featured image in Canva if that's going to be easier for you but definitely get you in there if you can you might want to build up to this a little bit but please don't think it's going to take loads of time I imagine a lot of you will spend time scheduling social media posts writing social media posts writing emails just put your blog in there because then actually if you do your blog first you can then chop it up send it out as social media posts send it out as emails and then actually by repurposing your core content that sits on your website you're making your other content a lot easier so like Bill has got, I've got a podcast like Bill has every Thursday when it goes out, I will create a load of, I'll create an email and lots of social media posts from what I've written on the blog post that goes with the podcast. So although it would, it, if you looked at, if you looked at the file that's got all of the info in there, you, it probably would look quite big. Actually, what I've done is I've just cut and pasted different things and gone at it from different angles. So there are ways, once you get into the, it's about getting some momentum and getting into that process of at first it might take you longer but eventually you will get to the point where you can probably turn a blog post around in less than an hour and if you think that that's going to sit on google and serve you for potentially decades it's going to be it is going to be worth your while yeah and i think that's the thing as well that we haven't really touched on so much here because we've been talking about more about blogging in terms of um you know creating that um trust and authority with clients which is super important but actually from my point of view from an SEO point of view and getting your website and your business more visible in Google and getting it ranking better and getting more eyeballs on your business it's absolutely fantastic for that you you just can't beat it and then the other things that you can do with the blog post URL after you've written it in terms of SEO as well it's not like just a one-time thing one-time thing as Rachel says this is content that is there forever. It's ranking forever. It's 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 not on a on a um, Facebook feed and just disappearing. So you do, although it takes a little bit of time to do, it's time saving in the end because not only do you reap the benefits of having the URL that you can give to people, and I've saved so much time by having this SEO mini series to hand out to people already. Like every time I hand it out, I'm like, yeah, it's amazing. Cause I haven't had to sit there and type, type out SEO again, you know, or what are keywords. So it's time saving in that sense, but it's also like, because your web, because it's helpful for SEO and visibility and ranking and everything, you're kind of saving time there as well, because you're, you're getting that visibility up, which isn't going to disappear, you know? So it's it's investing time in something that is really going to give back to your business and your visibility and growing your business and your clients and therefore your bank balance. It's, you know, winner, winner, chicken dinner. Yeah, I guess it's working a little bit smarter, isn't it? I yeah, think. yeah. And you do have to invest that time a little bit 
but you it does it as you, you're right it's totally working smarter absolutely especially for those facebook posts it should be a blog post crazy i'm gonna, I'm gonna mention a horrible word how about videos like doing blogs video blogs is that similar to blogging or you know I... depends how you do them but seo wise video oh my god ding 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 yeah we love it completely but you've got to do it in the right way and i think actually that's a really good point bill so the the thing with blogging and with vlogging and with connecting where you're going to host your blogs and how you're going to connect your content to um your blog or your vlog or your website and the keywords and everything that you do in order for this to work like to the maximum it can do it needs to be done right and that's what Rachel and I take you through in this course it's very much how to do it right from the off but to do it right so I see lots of people blogging but the keywords aren't quite right the way it's structured isn't quite right it's it's okay it's great it's a good start I'm, I'm like brilliant well done but let's tweak this slightly so that you can really get that maximum google juice out of it and that's what we go through on the course is really how to do it right from the beginning to make it work for you because i think both rachel and i are all about having things like whether it's pr or press or publicity or a website or whatever but we're about doing it right so that it works for you and your business because we don't want to be spending time, budget, investment or money on things that aren't going to work. So we're really, really about doing it right so that it works for you and you get a return on your investment. And your investment this time is time because you're blogging, but it, you will, you know, you, if you do it right, you get it back again. And how, yeah. do you, how do you monitor that? How do you work out your <clears throat> return on investment? With, with blogging, you're going to be wanting to check into your Google Analytics. But to be honest, I'm not so much a, I don't use Google Analytics hugely. For me, with my walking training grooming clients, it's about how many inquiries you're getting and how many bums on seats and about how, how many clients you're booking and things. And like with um, my lady this morning, who told me about the website and the income, that to me is the return on investment. She invested with me. She she's got the income and so that's how I kind of look at things a little bit more organically but obviously Rachel's much better at all the analytics and stats and everything like that I'm a I'm a bit a um, bit of a air in the sky with with stats but Rachel's really good at it yeah I am a little bit old school like you Rosie I would say and we've we've got a few people who who we've worked with both of us who have talked about the different types of clients that they get um mm. like one of them she's a, i know you're you guys are groomers but one's a dog she was a dog walker ricky sullivan um she was a dog walker in london which as you can imagine is quite competitive she started blogging she did it as a little bit of a hobby and then she was finding that the clients that she was getting who found her via her website were a much better much better fit so they weren't saying you know can you give us a discount or you know why does it cost 25 pound for a walk when so and so down the road is doing it for a tenner she was finding people were coming to her and saying yeah i've read about i've read your read on your website about these enrichment walks or whatever that you do so they were finding her on a website and she was getting these people and she got to the point where she was you know she had a wait list and she was having people inquire and say do you have any space can i go on your wait list so it basically you kind of you see you can look at your analytics um and that's all very well and good but you kind of you get a feel of it yourself i mean from my point of view, I've built a, a business as a pet business coach, helping people with content and publicity by doing this thing. So like Rosie, walking the walk, I was a journalist for years, still am, but by blogging and raising, you know, helping build my authority and getting people to my website, I've been able to build this business that I'm doing now. And that is from blogging. So um, you know, I've also got a pet blog, which is where it all started. And I was able to get sponsored posts through that. I've worked with big brands like Purina and Animed. And that was that was from blogging. So do all the social media stuff as well. But I just think you can give so much more of an insight into what you're all about um, with the blogging. So the return on, on investment, I would love to say if you write 10 blogs, you're going to see your income increase by 40%. It's impossible to say that. You will, you will see it yourself. Um, and... Yeah, it's, it's one of those where I know we've, get, we've constantly been told so many different things that we need to be doing. 
what I was saying before about kind of, you know, repurposing and working smarter, you can do that with your blog. Um, you can, you know, I've got a podcast out today about having insurance for your blog, and I'm going to do something on Instagram Reels, which I've just got into, about three things you should consider before hitting publish. So that blog has given me my Reels. I've also got another, got like a little audiogram that's going to go out. Again, that blog has given, that blog and podcast has given me loads of Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, or the other platform content and emails. Um, so yeah, that's kind of how it works. Um, and I think, I think it's just one of those things that you've got, you know, you've got to try. Like if you go all in on email marketing, you're going to get great results from that. If you go all in on Instagram, you're going to expect to see results from that. With the blogging, the reason why me and Rosie bang on about it so much is because it's there forever. It's not like an Instagram story. I'm not saying there's any, there's nothing wrong with Instagram stories. It's they're really great for showing behind the scenes and all that, but it's there forever. It doesn't vanish after 24 hours. And yeah, I think it's the growth thing as well. It's about I, I see blogging as creating opportunity as well. So when you're blogging, you're, you are seen as more of an expert in what you do and where you are and how you're doing it over other people that maybe aren't because you, you're establishing your business and what you do and talking about it. So when you blog, and this can't be measured either, Bill, this is the thing, it's kind of immeasurable, but people that have done the course that we did last year, the blogging course, they talk um, about opportunities that wouldn't have arisen if they hadn't have been blogging. So other companies that have seen their blog and then wanted to work with them or do a promotion with them, or uh, would you like to come and feature in my magazine? And so it's about creating opportunities in that sense that I don't think that's measurable particularly, but we know that without those blog posts, they wouldn't be seen because they get the email saying, oh, I saw your blog post on this. Can Is there a way that we can work together? And so businesses grow in that sense as well. It's not all about bank balance at the end of the day, is it? I mean, it's lovely because we've all got to pay mortgages and bills, but actually it's about a sort of holistic growth of your business as a whole and getting out there and working with that. That's where the fun starts, right? Working with other companies, promoting other people, doing tie-ins, doing all sorts of things. The opportunities are out there. And blogging yeah. really, really does help create opportunities, I think. I think, Rachel, if I pick up on that point that <clears throat> Rachel made about um, when people read your website and they read your blogs, they, they, get that, uh, they get that vital information about your business. So I was talking to Kirsty, my copywriter, this morning about this, and people actually phone us and say, it's not like, they, when they phone our business and say, can I book my Westie in? How much is it? And how do you do it? People are sort of pre-sold via our website. So they, <clears throat> they phone us up and says, and say, can I book my Westie in? You know, they, we don't have to go through all that conversation with them about how we do things in our business and X, Y, and Z, because they've taken the time to look through the website or they we don't actually do a blog at the moment, but you know, it's always something to consider. And you can pre-sell your customers by your website and your blog so that they know exactly what they're going to get when they phone you yeah. so all they have to do is phone you and book that appointment in rather than having to go through all of that explanation about who you are and how you work and what you charge and blah 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 so yeah. again it's putting that time and effort in at the beginning to then free up your time and sell to your customers at the end isn't it yeah yeah there's a book called, um, it's really good, called They Ask You Answer by Marcus Sheridan. He's an American marketing expert. And that's, that's this is, the stuff that we talk about, is a, that's the principle. So all the questions you get asked, we all the questions you're asked, we answer. Um, so if people are searching for dog grooming in Leicester or whatever it is, you're going to have all the answers on your website. And then that's going to find people People are going to find you via Google and basically like my entire kind of content strategy myself is answering the questions that small business owners have when it comes to content marketing and getting publicity. So um, the other thing I was going to say, just talking, just going on from what Rosie was saying is about the authority. Um, if you want to be an authority, if you want to be an expert groomer, if you want to be going on Pooch Perfect next year or you want to be getting featured in, you know, dog magazines, you're going to have to have something to demonstrate that authority and if you know if you do if you start with blogging then you can you can do that people think of blogging as being really old-fashioned and you know like being all being you know like so 2005 and things like that and basically you know if journalists are looking for you if people are looking to book you at an event they're going to want to read about you they're not going to want to like particularly journalists they're not going to go on your youtube channel like sorry but they're just not going to or do that <laughs> 
yeah they don't go you know like some of them go on tiktok i'm not saying that no journalist goes on tiktok but they just they want the information there and then like so if i'm writing about you bill or writing about rosie and her 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 boarding business and i want to know what the security measures are i'm just going to go on a website and want to see it there in black and white what they are Mm -hmm. um so yeah from the this is kind of how it all fits together with me with the publicity thing i used to just talk about publicity but then realize that content was such a big part of it so that's why i I cover that as well now Mm -hmm. um and yeah and i'm also like you know rosie's obviously doing her website stuff and i'm really keen to this is why i keep the pet blog going even though there aren't enough hours in the day to do it because i want to show that i'm walking the walk and that i'm doing the things i'm telling people to do um because i know that it works so i've had like you know gigs on the radio and stuff like that from having a pet blog and that doesn't do anything because my pet blog doesn't it's not a business as such but it's good for my authority and visibility yeah and the um you know i'm learning myself and the podcast is repurposing content from the youtube which then by answering people's questions um i do you have, do you use ask the public and you like creepy man sort of looking over you <laughs> when you uh the website answer the public i think it's a google yeah uh, I don't use that so much, but I get all my content from seeing the, the problems that people put into the group. So I get to to use that to create content, which is really good, really mm-hmm. interesting for me. Yeah, yeah. And that keeps people in your group as well, doesn't it? I mean, it shows to them that you, you know, you, you give us stuff about them, which is great. That's what it's all about, isn't it? We want to feel heard and understood and that people, you know, that people care, and that's especially when it comes to what's going on with our pets. Yeah. Definitely. We've got um, a question about Google My Business. Would you be okay to answer that? Yeah, if I can, I'll try. <laughs> um, so Lynn Webb is a pug trainer. She specializes in training pugs. Oh, cool. You know, Lynn, I think she's asked you, I think you've been in touch or um, can you explain how Google, how it works as in the pictures and posts on Google My Business? I'm looking at a pug home boarding and daycare and training. So um sort of three businesses into one and using good i know she's at, at the moment trying to set up um google my business and going through all that so how's posting pictures and posting posts into google my business going to help her uh because they are shown on your google knowledge panel when people are searching for you so when you search for your business so it's say dog boarding and your area uh, say Brixton, dog boarding Brixton, and you are that business, sometimes we get a little panel here, don't we? Um, and it's called a knowledge panel, and it has the information about your business and photos and posts. Um, so they're going to show up in there. So not only are they going to connect with the people that are searching for you because they're going to see those pictures and posts, and I know 100% that this works because we use it for our boarding business all the time. Um, And people will say, I saw that post or I saw that picture of that Pomeranian or whatever. And I think I saw something the other day. It does happen with groomers, I think, as well, that if you put up a a picture of a particular breed, then you suddenly find an influx of that breed. And we have that with the the daycare business as well. You know, you you post a picture of a cockapoo and suddenly you get a load of cockapoo inquiries. So people do relate to your content. So that's why posting pictures and... um, posts on Google My Business really helps. It's it's like a, it's another way of reaching people, isn't it? And it's Google's content, it's on their platform. So Google is a complete narcissist and Google loves Google and Google will always show Google's own content before it shows anybody else's. So give content to Google, it's, it's a no brainer. I call it feeding the Google gods. Mm, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So with your, um, obviously we've done a lot of chat about blogging and how it's going to help your business and um, going forward, how can people get in touch with you and look into doing this blogging course that you're looking to offer? Okay, so <laughs> I wasn't sure if Rosie was going to go there. You, you can go, you're way more concise oh. talking than I am. I'm like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Okay, so if you... Um, Okay, so if, you found, if you've listened to what we've said and you would like to get started with blogging or to kind of revive a blog that you're not sure is working for you, we do have a four-week programme happening, which is well, it's actually over five weeks because we're having a week off in it, but um, starting next week, so next Monday, and it's called Get Your Pet Business Found on Google. So very briefly cover, I don't want to do a big sell because I said to you earlier, I don't like selling, but we're going to cover how Google works, 
Uh, we're going to cover content made simple. So we're going to make content creation really easy for you. We're going to cover getting your content seen. So that's going to be all about repurposing. And then we're going to cover planning your content. So we're going to help you plan your content for 12 months. Um, so that is happening next week, starting Monday at seven o'clock. Um, and it's happening um, over five week period, but there'll be four sessions. Um, the investment is 197 um, and I can give Bill the link afterwards. If you'd like, but if, you, um, if you're listening and you're thinking, I really do want to get started with blogging, but I'm not sure if I'm ready to invest, please head over to my podcast. It's got loads and loads of um, content on there, blogs um, that you can read about, about getting started with blogging. If you go on to my most recent one, um, in fact, not today's, the one, the one last week I did apps and software to help you with your pet business content. That's where I'm talking about Otter and all the other really good apps that you can use to make it easier for you. And there's loads of links in there about other blogging um, tips and yeah, guides and that kind of thing. So my my website is publicityforpetbusinesses.co.uk and all my social media handles are at Rachel Spencer UK. And um, so that's where you can find out more from me. Over to you, Rosie. Uh, I've just realised I need to do some blog posts on why blogging is good for website and SEO because I haven't written any. But I do have an SEO mini series. <laughs> Did I mention it? <laughs> um, yeah, you can, I've, I've got many URLs. They're all called different things. I'll pop them in the um, thread afterwards. But the SEO mini series is a good place to start because it's like the fundamentals of SEO. And that's kind of the premise that the blog posts are working on coming from my angle with regards to the SEO and getting your vis business visible in Google. So it'd be good to kind of have a look at the keywords and everything that we're going to be talking about because that I, Rachel and I take it turns in turns on the course and we do, um, we do a week each, although we're both there all the time. And I start off by talking about how this is going to work, how we're going to make it work for your business and, and really all that keyword stuff and everything. And also we go into lots of fun things like um, how to make, how to design a blog, how to make it look nice, uh, making sure that your pictures are all optimized and have the right keywords on them and everything like that. And we've also got a pop up Facebook group, which we had last time, which is really fun. And we're both in there for the whole um, four weeks and you can come and ask lots of questions and people write their first blog post and come and check it with us. And we we say, you know, this is great. You can tweet that we can do this. So it's very hands on as well, which is really fun. How often these courses get run? Is it um, one this year or do you do multiple courses? I don't really know. Well, uh, it's like one, <laughs> once a year, really, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, we'll probably do it again. Maybe just we did it in. Yeah, I think we'll maybe do it again in December. But it's a when did we do it year. last year? We changed the date because of lockdown. Yeah, when we went into lockdown, we were going to do it in December, but then we moved it forward because we went into lockdown and we thought, well, everyone's going to be at home and really fed up. And we didn't yeah. know how long lockdown would last, but it ended. Yeah, up with... I think it was November, wasn't it? In yeah, because that's when we our current. Yeah, something like that. And now we're just doing it because it's June and it's a nice time. When's the next one in September? Did you say? I would say I reckon probably November, December, because then. So it's twice a year, Bill. Yeah. To answer your question, now we've worked it out. <laughs> well, I just, I just want to cover it because um, you know people might. I mean, this is going to become a podcast and a YouTube video, so you know people might miss it for next week, but then yeah. they might want to um, join the join the course at another date. So twice a year, it's fairly full on, so I don't think we'd want to do it do it any more than that. Otherwise, it could be a bit like, oh my god. Um, but yeah, it's fun to do twice a year, definitely. The Facebook group I really enjoy as well because everybody's like, la, 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 and showing off their blogs and everything. It's fantastic. It's really good fun. <laughs> cool, excellent. Is there? Uh, that's all the questions we've got in the in the group at the moment. Brilliant. You know, everyone's busy at work as well. I should think so. Yeah, of course. If anybody wants to pop any questions afterwards, mm -hmm. um, that's cool. And just tag us in so that we can yeah. come and answer them. Yeah, you're both in the in the Facebook group, so you'll be watching out, won't you? And we'll make sure we get all of your um, website handles and your podcasts and everything into the comments so people can click on them and subscribe and follow you. Follow you both. Lovely. Thank, oh, thank you. you. All right. It's been really great um, catching up with you two. And I think we've covered, you know, it's, we've, been a, we've covered so much in this session, but if people just sort of go away, listen to it, make some notes from it and start looking at what we've suggested and what you've, we've been talking about, you know, they can really make some progress within their businesses, can't they? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Well, take care and we'll catch up with all of you soon. Thanks, oh, thanks so much, Bill. See you later.